Disrupting Japan, Episode 53. Welcome to Disrupting Japan, straight talk from Japan's most successful entrepreneurs. I'm Tim Romero, and thanks for listening. Now, fashion is a tough business, and fashion subscription boxes are even tougher. Now, in case you haven't run across fashion box startups before, they basically operate by sending subscribers a selection of new clothes or accessories for their consideration each and every month. As Satoshi Amanuma, or Ash as his friends call him, and I discuss in the interview, the model looks great from the top down. In fact, it emulates an important part of the high end shopping experience. But this business is much harder than it seems. And fashion subscription box startups around the world are blowing through their capital and going out of business as investors turn their attention to newer, shinier objects. Ash and the team at Air Closet, however, think they have found the answer. But before we get into it, let me introduce you to someone. I want to tell you about Justa. Now, I've known these guys for years, and I've been recommending them long before they became a sponsor. Just as really the only recruiting site that gets bilingual startups. Whether you're looking for American engineers or Japanese sales staff or the other way around, Justa can help you out. Unlike recruiting companies, they're priced to be very startup friendly, and unlike job boards, they're an active part of the startup community here. And they're trusted by some of the best talent Japan has to offer. So drop by justa.io and see what they're about. Much of the secret to success in the fashion business is in the decidedly unglamorous area of cost control and operations. In fact, at one point, Air Closet was almost bankrupted by their own success. It's an amazing story, so let's get right to the interview. So I'm sitting here with Satoshi Ash Amanuma of Air Closet. Thanks for sitting down with me. Thank you very much. Now, Air Closet is a subscription fashion box for women,、mm-hmm. but that's a really kind of high level overview. So, why、sure. don't you tell us a bit about what Air Closet is? So, it is a new type of subscription fashion box startup in Japan. And our service is renting casual fashion items for ladies. Our target is basically、uh, end of 20s, 30s, 40s ladies. Well, 20s or 40s is a, a big range.、Mm-hmm. But how does the system work? Do they fill out a form or do they select pictures? Or... So, re- regarding、uh, like、registration, the customers they choose、uh, quick pictures、uh-huh. like、out of four, then out of seven. So that we can understand which fashion types they、uh, prefer. Like, for example, skirt types or pants types or dark colors or you know, cool types or g a r d i and, and in, so i n Instead、forth. of having them explain it to you, you just let them choose pictures that they exactly, like. Exactly, yeah. Followed by that, we have a form for、uh, preferred colors or usually which colors they、uh, wear. Some of our customers usually prefer navy, black, and white or something like that.、Oh, okay. but Maybe they you know, want to try red or yellow or you know, light blue and things、goes. like that because it's rental, so they want to challenge. you know. Then we ask about their body size and we also ask about their clothes size they usually wear. And after that,、uh, we ask like, personal questions regarding fashion,、uh, kind of a FAQ thing for the、uh, fashion. What, what kind of questions? Some of our customer w a n t s to hide their arms or you know, hips because.、Oh, okay. So, just very kind of personal things、yes. there. All right. You get a lot of information and a lot、mm-hmm. of opinions from each person.、Mm-hmm. But、uh, you know, our steps are quite easy for four or five steps we have. So,、uh, maybe around 15 to 20 minutes they、uh, need. And then、uh, their kind of、uh, whole body photo. For our stylist. So they upload a picture of themselves as yes. well? Yes, yes. And then what happens? Yeah, then the registration f i n i s h All the、uh, data will s e n d to our stylist. So that consumers、uh, usually just wait for three, four days. 
then they receive one box, including three fashion items. Usually like two tops, for example, one shirt and uh, like a uh, knit, mm -hmm. and then uh, one bottoms for like pants or skirt. There are items that can be worn together or there are items that just fit the profile for the user? Fit the uh, profile for the user and also uh, including one coordinate. We usually enter two tops and one bottoms mm -hmm. or maybe one tops, one bottoms and one, one piece. So uh, stylists usually prefer, for example, these wear with these tops and this bottom. Oh, so they, they put piece. together an, an outfit for yeah. them. And In total, uh, it should be, uh, you know, followed by uh, user's profile or like what kind of, you know, type, types of fashion they prefer. Then uh, user just enjoy <laughs> the club <laughs> until they, uh, you know, they feel uh, satisfied. So we do not have any renting uh, terms or anything. So they can keep it as long as they want? Yes. Or send it back and get a new box? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So when they send back a box, we uh, check the cloth and then after that we just send another box followed by their feedback. So our stylists understand uh, more and more if you know, users use our services. So the service costs around $60 a month. Right? Uh, yes, uh, but we usually have two types of plans. The first one called light plan, which is uh, only one time exchange allowed, which is around $60. All right. Then uh, around $90 or $100, we call regular plan, which is unlimited. And so what happens if they like one of the items of clothing, if they want to buy it? Yeah, they just, uh, you know, open their, um, we call the my page, then uh, they can check three fashion items and they just type, they just want to buy it. And then they, they just keep it keep and return it. the yeah. other two items. Yes, exactly. Oh, okay, so they're actually buying um, used clothing, right? Yes. Huh, so it's actually in a way, you're describing it as a fashion rental service, mm -hmm. but in a way it's also very much like a, a home shopping service exactly, yeah. where they're being delivered these items to try on. Exactly. That's really clever. In fact, the very first time mm -hmm. I ever went shopping with my wife mm -hmm. at a really nice department store, I was really impressed when I realized what their sales strategy was, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. which is basically you get the woman in the fitting room and then you just keep throwing clothes <laughs> over the door. Yeah. And just don't let her come out until <laughs> she, you know, just keep the clothes coming awesome. and she'll buy something. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like a very much the same yeah, sort of model. Like that. Yes. So our purpose of this, you know, business itself is not renting clothes, more like uh, discovering new items. Right. Yeah. That are already tailored to the tastes mm -hmm. of your customers. Yeah. And also, you know, thinking about e-commerce, we usually buy, uh, you know, ourselves, choosing by ourselves. But we want to, you know, create a new kind of discovery of clothes by uh, recommended from someone which is our professional stylist. Tell me about your customers. You mentioned uh, an age range, but that's mm -hmm. pretty broad. So yeah. who are your customers? What do they so like about your customers? Our customers, uh, basically we, you know, fit the uh, busy kind of business with women and also uh, like moms. Moms? Yeah. Oh, okay. So basically just people who are really busy. Yeah. So they're really busy and they, you know, do not have a time to think about new fashion items or discovery of new fashion items and or go shopping and so forth. They do not need to change their lifestyle. They just need to register and wait for new discovery. And they'll have a new box of, of new clothes to try mm -hmm. on when they get home. Yeah. So, you know, thinking about, about mom growing up, you know, little child, uh -huh. they just can, you know, shop or they just can try on during their baby's sleep Excellent. which is I think a new you know experience so what segment of the market are you targeting I mean um, what what is the average price of the items what kind of the, price, the point price are you range selling? is is not like a fast fashion we call in Japan which is really lower price mm -hmm. is not our target and also uh, you know the, the high-end uh, brands, you know, top brands is not our target. We are focusing on middle range, mm -hmm. but with the uh, high quality clothes. So the around one uh, items, 
it's about uh, like um, eighty dollars to two hundred fifty dollars. Right. So uh, we're fo focusing on kind of how can I say in Japan we generally call conservative fashion style. So but, uh, I don't know how we call it. It's it's a. Uh, I yeah. How would I how do I explain this in English? It's it is everyday oh. fashion. It's not casual fashion, but you know. Our customer can go out for you know work, okay. and also our customer can go out for I don't know mom's party or something like that. All right, let's take a step back. Talk about when you started Air Closet, mm -hmm. or even a little before that. You worked as um, a project manager at a consulting company yes. for like eight years, yes. and then you worked at Rakuten, mm -hmm. at, which is an e-commerce company. Yeah, big mm -hmm. e-commerce company for how long were you there? Four years. Three years. Three around. years. Yes. Why start a company and why women's fashion? Uh, good question. <laughs> <laughs> From the beginning of my uh, career, uh, I have started thinking about you know building a company. So uh, during my uh, career, around more than eight, like nine years as a IT and strategic consultant, and also plus three hours around for as a. Uh, UI and UX uh, kind of global manager. I have uh, you know, created like hundreds of business ideas. Yeah, let's dig into this because one of the questions that people who want to be entrepreneurs ask me a lot mm -hmm. is how do I decide on a startup idea? Coming up with 150 ideas yeah. is actually not that hard. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But what was the process you used to decide that one out of the 150 that yes. you wanted to do? The first one is uh, we really like internet and we're thinking about you know internet service so we think that we should choose internet service. Then the second one is we really like uh, sharing economy or like consulting uh, you know uh, collaborative consulting uh, services so uh, sharing economy is our second uh, keyword and the third one is you know if we start up a uh, you know, business so why did this model win out what was it about this model that made it number one the the, the first thing is how many or how much you know the, the happiness we can create is okay. our you know measurement and also uh, of course it's based on our kind of uh, experience with the uh, you know shopping experience with uh, with my wife you know, oh, go out okay. for the, uh, for example, department store in Japan. We usually have, we call the floor map. Sure, if, the map of the, the so you know where the, to go for each, yeah. each item. If, usually if I see the map with, uh, you know, wife, I can kind of uh, guess which store, you know, my wife go in. <laughs> then which store, you know, my wife do not go in because, you know, my wife is quite busy. She never discover new fashion brands or you know discover new fashion style. Oh, so she was just After, going to the same stores again exactly. and again. Yeah. All right. And also, you know, going to the same shops and come up with the uh, new and uh, same types of uh, clothes she already have. I thought, why is that kind of you know thing happen? And come up with the uh, idea. I think uh, you know it's a kind of a lack of discovery of clothes. My wife is you know working woman and as a mom, mm -hmm. so uh, she's really busy and she do not have time, you know, to discover uh, new fashion items by I don't know watching TV shows or you know watching uh, fashion uh, kind of uh, magazines. Uh -huh. And also, she does not have enough uh, time to go, you know, shopping for her clothes. It really was a problem that was right in front of you. It's not, yeah, my problem, but, you know, <laughs> I think uh, if we create, uh, you know, th that kind of uh, service or business, my shopping time can be reduced, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> That's, you know, I don't know. <laughs> it's joking, anyway, but... Okay. So, yeah, the, the value itself we you know start think about you know creating the value from our service itself is for ladies okay. mm -hmm. now when you originally started the company mm -hmm. um, did you get funding immediately or did you bootstrap it for a while 
uh, found it uh, immediately from uh, the uh, one uh, incubator called Samurai Incubate in, in Japan. Okay. So it yeah. is really a small uh, investment though. So Samurai Incubate's a well-known accelerator here in Japan. Did yeah. you go through their acceleration program? We uh, went into their pitch contest and got a prize. You know, they decided to invest us. Okay, so it was just straight investment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So right. after right after the first investment, we have started digging our business model and also uh, we went out for the uh, kind of hearing for the uh, potential users. So like uh, market surveys or yeah, talking to users? Surveys and also we have uh, looked for uh, you know, partnerships, for example, warehouse companies and, uh, you know, other companies we need. Okay. And once you had the, the basics and the logistics set up, mm -hmm. now you had a, a incredibly successful pre-launch. Mm -hmm. um, yes. Well, you had many more people signed up than you expected. So Ten times, I think, yes. uh, you know, than we have uh, expected. For a small startup, that can be so dangerous. You can be bankrupted by your own success. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, sure. <laughs> so, how many people did you have sign up before you even launched? Uh, 20, around 25,000. 25,000. Mm -hmm. And you were expecting like 2,500. 2, yeah. <laughs> well, that's a good thing, although mm -hmm. kind of scary. Mm -hmm. So what was your strategy? How did you get the word out? What was your marketing plan pre-launch? So at the... Uh, Pre-launch, we just published one uh, press release, and also uh, like Nikkei, which is famous yeah, it's the uh, biggest, business like paper. the kind of the Wall Street Journal of Japan. Yeah, we had also, I think, uh, around ten uh, online media just picked up the our uh, press release. Wow! At the same time, so then after that, I think the biggest success of our kind of uh, pre-launch is that social networking marketing, mm -hmm. SNS marketing is, I think, uh, I think, biggest success. Did you go into the social network marketing with a marketing plan or was it more of just word of mouth? Word of mouth. Wow, that's fantastic. Totally. <laughs> that's amazing. To actually get that level of traction from basically a press release mm -hmm. is... <laughs> So we really have actually unusual. no plans for the uh, you know, <laughs> big success of uh, pre-launch, though. So you had to delay that launch a little, right? While you got yeah. the stock. And <laughs> but it was successful. Yeah, the delay comes up with the uh, you know, too many uh, pre-registration of users we had. So we had a kind of a crash of, with our system. Uh -huh. So around 10 days, we needed to reconstruct our, you know, system uh, infrastructure itself. Well, 10 days delay isn't too bad. You launched with 25,000 registrations, and, mm -hmm. and how many customers do you have now? Around uh, 90,000 customers, but 90,000 registration users, including free registration users uh, and okay. waiting registration users. Um, so, okay, well, let's, let's talk a bit about the, the business model. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of fashion box companies in, in Asia and the U.S. Have, yes. have had problems with the model. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That said, they haven't seen the traction that you guys have so quickly. But the items themselves are selected by real people, mm -hmm. right? Yes. And those have to be packed and boxed and sent out. And the returns have to be unpacked and mm -hmm. dry cleaned and, and restocked. Yeah, exactly. And mm -hmm. this is a lot of... Uh, manual labor. Yeah. How do the economics work out? The biggest one is, I think, the number of stylists uh, we need, or which is directed to uh, to select the the items. Yeah. Is that something you're thinking about maybe using like artificial intelligence for? In the uh, future, of course, yes. Though currently we are focusing manually, but you know, thinking about picking up code. Mm -hmm. Usually our you know, professional stylists pick up directly, like for example, pick up three code. But instead of that, we have uh, our own system, which can allow them uh, selecting uh, through online. Oh, okay. So we have a style select screen. No. Actually, uh, our stylist can select ah, for our customers. So that's quite easy to you know, select the uh, items. 
through the uh, online instead of uh, you know picking up directly. Your stylists are using a web interface to exactly, pick yes. out mm -hmm. these items, so it's reasonably efficient. Yeah. Okay. Can you talk about your conversion rates? So, mm -hmm. on average, if you send out ten boxes, mm -hmm. how many pieces do you sell? So uh, the uh, conversion rate of our uh, you know uh, selling conversion rate keep increasing, which is I think uh, really good and also uh, you know kind of uh, user satisfaction rating itself keep increasing which is also nice and the key point of this business model I think is the uh, cost reduction because you know thinking about one box going out to a customer and you know comes back then you know as you have uh, discussed we need to think about you know the, the dry cleaning and also pick up cost from the uh, warehouse yeah. Well, I'm sure your, your dry cleaning costs must be huge. It is, yeah. We have uh, one uh, big warehouse company as our investors, investor, so that we can reduce the uh, cost of keeping our clothing in, in, in their warehouse and pick up cost of the uh, warehouse. And also we have uh, the biggest cleaning company in, in Japan as our, another investor, so that we can reduce our cleaning cost. In future, we have a promise, you know, re keep reducing our cost. Yeah. So that's, I think, our kind of strategy, having our platform as reasonable cost. The other big business risk that seems to be there mm -hmm. is the clothes that you send out to your customers. Mm -hmm. Are they on consignment from the manufacturers or do you have to buy the clothes and keep inventory? We have more than 300 uh, brands as our partner and uh, we need to uh, discuss with them and uh, most of our uh, stocks we have purchased so wow well that's that's a lot of inventory for a startup to hold yeah <laughs> <laughs> but thinking about fashion style mm -hmm. you know the, our, our focus is for basically for working women so uh, we do not, you know, need to think about, for example, I don't know, rock fashion or, you know, more like a, uh, evening wear. Uh, yeah, or evening wear. Or we do not think about dresses and we do not think about, I don't know, coats. Oh, so you've managed to keep it fairly targeted. Mm -hmm. Okay, that makes sense. So targeted not only fashion types, but also uh, sizes. Uh, you recently raised a new round of funds. Mm -hmm. Congratulations. Thank you very much. So is most of that money going to be used to increase your inventory holdings or is it going to be spent on marketing? Both. Uh, and also uh, we use for hiring uh, new members. Does Air Closet have plans to go global? Yes. Yeah. Thinking about you know, going global, the one uh, I think biggest value of Air Closet itself is not the uh, fashion items, more like uh, styling the uh, you know, fashion coordinate by our stylist, which is Japanese fashion coordinate. Oh, I see. So we can, I think, you know, go out with you know, that line. We can set up, uh, for example, we can set up the same business model in uh, Asia or Southeast Asia with our Japanese clothes, with our Japanese so you would be, oh, I see. You would be operating in Taiwan or Singapore, for example, mm -hmm. but selling it as Japanese fashion. Exactly. Yes. Okay. It's interesting. I mean, there certainly is a lot of interest in Japanese fashion and Japanese culture mm -hmm. all over Southeast Asia. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Do you think the market is big enough there to mm -hmm. make market entry worthwhile? I think it's, uh, we need another uh, marketing research, of course, but uh, based on my experience in, uh, for example, in Thailand or Indonesia and so forth, I think uh, we do have enough uh, market size. Your investors now, are they all Japanese investors or is it a mix of Japanese and Western? Uh, all Japanese. And I think, you know, thinking about Japanese startup, our in investors are unique because we're focusing on not only from venture capital, but also from 
uh, kind of, uh, how can I say? Like strategic investment? Mm -hmm. Yeah. With the synergy of, you know, operate, operating side. Yeah, that's, I mean, that is some of the best money you can get. Mm -hmm. But the reason I ask that is that I've noticed that Japanese startups who have either foreign investors or a mix of Japanese and foreign mm -hmm tend to get a lot of pressure to go global quickly. And I was wondering, since you have all Japanese investors, mm -hmm. are they also pressuring you to go global quickly? Basically not. Oh, OK. Interesting. We have two types of investors. The first one is venture capital. They are think, thinking about, of course, IPO. Then uh, the second one is our strategic investors. They focusing on how they can earn kind of money from air closed business model itself. Right. They want you to succeed, so they'll make more money. Yeah. So uh, I think you know thinking about those kind of investors, they, their pressure is is quite low. So they're mostly focused on the Japanese market. Yeah. It's you and the it's team right. that's looking globally. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Excellent. Let's talk about startups in Japan in general. Mm -hmm. Going global is something that most startups here say they want to do. What do you think the biggest challenge companies have when they try to do that is? Is it language or culture or...? Yeah, I think language is the, uh, the biggest challenge. Still? Still. Okay. Let me ask you kind of a personal question. Mm -hmm. Sure. Because starting a company in the U.S. is a very popular, accepted thing to do. In Japan, it's still not completely accepted. It's still yeah. viewed as incredibly risky. Mm -hmm. So when you made the decision to leave what was a very promising career at some really good companies to, to go found your own startup, yeah. was your family and friends supportive of it? My family really uh, has uh, have supported. If you know our business is not succeeded, of course we can just go for another job and get you know another job and just live for a while. Right, right. <laughs> So I think we should not think about, you know, starting up companies are not risks, more like uh, I think uh, people just fear, usually in Japan, failure itself, mm -hmm. they think it's a uh, risk. So you think most people are afraid not because of a, a monetary risk, but mm -hmm. a, a risk of more status like, uh, or face? Yes. yes. Okay. I think so. Do you think it's changing? Slightly, but I don't <laughs> think so. Oh, that's too bad. Yeah. But I think uh, it's slightly changing. For example, recently, for example, 10 or like five years ago in Japan, we usually have uh, 20s uh, entrepreneurs in general. Uh -huh. But recently, 30s or 40s entrepreneurs, uh, you know, the n number of 30s or 40s oh, entrepreneurs so the, are increasing. So the number of older entrepreneurs are yes, increasing. increasing with their career yeah. experiences. That's a good sign in two ways. I mean, one, it's, it's much more experienced people are mm -hmm. coming into entrepreneurship. Yes. And also it means that it's becoming more socially acceptable because those are the people with mm -hmm. the the biggest amount to exactly. lose. Mm -hmm. exactly. So that's a good sign. Yeah, I think so. Before we wrap up, mm -hmm. let me ask you what I call my magic wand question. Ooh, okay. Yes. And that's, if I gave you a magic wand mm -hmm. and I told you that you could change anything about Japan, anything at all, you could change Japanese culture, the education system, the way people thought about risk, to make it better for startups, what would you change? Mm. Take your time. This is why we don't do it live. <laughs> yeah. We should not, yeah. It's a really nice question. In Japan, basically we think that failure is, is not a good thing. Mm. If we can change the mind of you know Japanese people of thinking about failure to more like a good experience, it's not failure. Okay, so so you would change the way people think about think failure, about failure yes. to turn it into more of a experiment, experiment. or yes. a learning experience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Well, that would be a huge if difference. They, if they think with that way, I think they are you know, happy to take risks to have a good experience, which is currently thought about failure. Actually, I think that is starting to happen. If you look at some of the books on starting a startup that have become popular in Japan, mm -hmm. whether it's the Lean Startup mm -hmm. or um, Steve Blank's books, mm -hmm. all of them frame it as um, experiments. Mm -hmm. You're just trying to get the results. And that idea is starting to take hold here. I think so too, yes. Okay. So before we wrap up, is there anything that you want to talk about that we haven't talked about yet? Uh, thinking about not about uh, business model or not about our services, but more like uh, I want to talk about our team. Our team really focusing on uh, user experience itself. Our services is not fashion renting services. Our services is more like a, like a kind of a emotional service. How can I say? Our goal is to create a wonderful fashion discovery. Every company says they really are focused on user experience, right? Mm -hmm. So, so what is Air Closet doing that's that's different from normal companies? In general, in Japan, I think. Uh, they do not say we are focusing on, for example, user experience. More like they're focusing on user satisfaction, I think. But we're focusing on user experience itself. So user experience means it's not only the uh, touch points of, with our service, more like in uh, their lifestyle, how they experience. So for example, with our service, they can receive a new fashion item with uh, beautiful color, for example, then our customer, she can just go out for, for example, a shopping or go out for a walk. And the, her colleague will maybe say that, oh, you, you, you look different, but it's really, you know, fit you. I think that experience is really uh, happy for her. Oh, I see. So when you're talking about a user experience, you're not talking necessarily just about their experience Directly, directly with your service, but, yes, but exactly. how it impacts their lifestyle and exactly, their life. Yes. Yeah. That's what we want to create. So, uh, you know, we usually having, uh, you know, for example, meetings for thinking about user experience and uh, focusing on how we, you know, thinking about how we create that. Listen, it's been great. Thanks so much for sitting Thank down with much. me. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. It was really nice time. Some of Japan's largest corporations are starting open innovation programs and are actively reaching out to global startups. They're new at this, and that's where Crew, with two W's, comes in. Crew runs open innovation programs for companies like Toyota and Panasonic and dozens more. And these programs are one of the best ways to jumpstart your business in Japan. Many are open to global startups, and they're completely free. Now, I know, and I work with the Crew team, and they're probably doing more than anyone to bridge the gap between corporate Japan and global startups. So drop by crew with two W's dot M-E slash four hyphen startups and get started. And we're back. It's clear that Air Closet has a demand side covered. They've been oversubscribed with a lengthy waiting list since weeks after their first announcement, and the trend doesn't look like it's going to be stopping anytime soon. Managing the supply side, the inventory, the personnel costs, that's what sinks most fashion box startups. And it seems like Ash and the team are focused on this. After their first multi-million dollar round, far too many young founders, both in Japan and overseas, tend to do a lot of prestige spending. They move to nicer offices, they revamp their online presence, and embark on expensive marketing campaigns. One of the things that impressed me most about Air Closet was that in our discussions, both during and after the interview, the team focused on how the new investments would enable economies of scale, better inventory management, and other ways that operations can be optimized. I think we'll be hearing a lot from Air Closet in the future. They have a fighting chance in a brutal market. 
If you've had either a great or a terrible online fashion experience, Ash and I would love to hear from you. So come by disruptingjapan.com slash show053 and let's talk about it. When you drop by, you'll find all the links and sites that Ash and I talked about and much, much more in the resources section of the post. I also want to let you know that our second anniversary live show is coming up on September 13th at Super Deluxe in Rapongi. If you're on the mailing list, you'll be getting updates and information. If you're not on the mailing list, well, come on, you should really be on the mailing list. You can sign up at the site or can just get the event info there or on our Facebook page. Please let people know about us and get the word out. If you like what we're doing, share it with your friends. If you hate what we're doing, share it with your enemies. And most of all, thanks for listening. And thank you for letting people interested in Japanese startups know about the show. I'm Tim Romero, and thanks for listening to Disrupting Japan.